Good morning, everyone. We're coming to you live from beautiful Bedford County on this Lord's Day. We thank you for being here. If you're from uh, our EAG Church, thank you for being here. We love you. We miss you. Mega hugs to you. And if you're from somewhere else, um, thank you for being here. We're so glad you're here. I'm going to give some announcements, and then my husband's going to share a message from God's Word and also... Um, serve communion. So that's pretty exciting today. We are using a new platform. Uh, it's, it's still live, uh, Facebook Live, but it's with a new way of doing it. So I am concerned that you're even seeing us. So if you are seeing us, please let us know that you are seeing us and hearing us. Also, um, if you're getting just us or if you're getting some other picture, odd picture with it, let us know because we need to know if we need to adjust something. So let us know in the comments. And Belinda, if you're there, um, I can't see the comments now. So if you see that people aren't seeing us, if you're not seeing us, just give me a call and I'll run to the telephone. Okay. Thanks, Belinda. Okay. For announcements, as you all know, we're not doing um, church at the building right now, but remember we are the church and um, we have office hours still from Monday to Thursday, 10 to 2, but please do call first because um, we're not sure if, um, so we're not, we might not be there at all hours, so just call first. If you want to drop off your uh, ties and offerings, uh, call first about that too. And if you want to just leave them on the table in the foyer without having to have person-to-person -person contact, that's just great. We, we are happy with that. So um, you can contact Pastor John anytime or me. We're available for you even if we don't do home visits because we don't want to compromise your health. We are available to you. Email us, call us, don't don't use our cell phone because we have poor service here, but call our home phone. Also, um, we are trying to look at new things such as Zoom for our small groups. We are missing our home groups. So if we're, we might set up something called Zoom for that. So just keep in touch. Watch our um, Facebook page. And let me get that exactly what that is. It's www.facebook.com forward slash Everett Assembly. That should be what you're on and what we're on. I sure hope so. <laughs> and our Facebook group is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Everett Assembly. And check out our, uh, er um, our Everett Assembly webpage go to www.everettassembly.org. On there, if you go to across the navigation bar at the top, if you go to um, us, US, and then look down and click on coronavirus update, you'll see a whole page with updates. We're trying to keep that updated and uh, also on Facebook. So um, check those resources out. While you're on the webpage, check out um, Sermons, look up uh, under media on the navigation bar, look up sermons. You can listen to old sermons and also look at um, the resource page. There's all kinds of things on there. If you forgot how to log into Right Now Media or if you want to sign up for it, just go to resources and scroll down a little bit and you'll find out how to do that. Um, one new thing is that we have Facebook, or, or I mean, um, online giving set up. So that's pretty exciting. We haven't tested it yet though. So you might want to wait a day or two and let Pastor and I do our giving that way today. That is not something that you have to do. You can still do the way you usually do. This is just a new convenient way if you want to use it. Thank you so much for checking that out. Um, again, um, we're so glad you are here. If you are, um, seeing us and um, hearing us, give us um, a like, give us a heart, give us a wow, whatever you wanna do. Also hit like at the top of our Facebook page so you can like our whole page and follow. Do that so you can keep abreast of what we're doing. Um, we just wanna say hi, we love you, we miss you. We're so excited for anybody that's here 
from anywhere you are. In fact, if you're not from EAG Church, Everett Assembly of God, why don't you put down in the comments right below here where you're from? We would love to hear that. And even if you check this video out later, after um, the, video's li the video live is finished, we will go back and look and we'll see comments of people who look at the video later and still comment or like, and we'll, we'll love to see who you are. Okay, um, I think that's all, and I'm gonna give it over to Pastor. Well, good morning, church. And it's great to have you here again today. Thank you, Bonnie, for sharing all those uh, important information with us. Uh, once again, it's an honor and a privilege always to share with you. And you've heard this message over and over, I'm sure. We're living in unprecedented times. And that is certainly true. But God's given us an opportunity here to share uh, the message in a new way, in a different way for many of us. Sharing this way by video is a new challenge for me uh, personally. It's causing me to stretch myself personally, just as I have told you many times, I'm sure, uh, that uh, we want you to, <laughs> to be able to stretch yourself, that God wants you to uh, continue to use your gifts, and sometimes he'll stretch you beyond your comfort zone. But um, being in front of the camera and being behind a pulpit are two different things. Uh, but being a church without walls is really the biblical model. Uh, in the New Testament, they were more effective beyond their service gatherings. And uh, we're praying that God will do the same for us. And whenever you have to endure a major crisis in our lives, we have to remember that God's always trying to speak to us. Whether we're a believer in Jesus Christ or whether we are an unbeliever, God is always using circumstances and situations to speak clearly to our hearts because he wants to make us more successful in him. So I hope what I share today will be a turning point for some people. Uh, it's my prayer that my words today will uh, set you into a new direction, uh, find God's power in your life, God's peace for your life, not only for today and not only for these hours that we're living in, but for eternity. And in just a, a little while, we're going to take some time to share communion um, with believers. But before we do that, let me share a really important message uh, with you today. There was a little boy who uh, was sick on Palm Sunday, and his, his uh, mom and him stayed home while his father went off to church service. And when his father came home, he was holding in his hand a palm branch. And so his son was asking him, Dad, why, why do you have this palm branch in your hand? And his, uh, he said to his son, he said, you see, when Jesus came to town, everyone waved palm branches at him. And, uh, and we just used those palm branches to, to glorify God. And the little boy replied, oh, shucks. The one Sunday that I miss is the Sunday that Jesus shows up. Wow. We may not be together physically, but that doesn't mean that Jesus didn't show up. He's here. He's wherever you are, wherever all of us are. And today, Palm Sunday, is the day when the whole city threw a parade, literally, for Jesus. As Jesus rode into the city, the people threw palm branches in anticipation of the celebration where Jesus was worshipped and he was praised. You see, this day is a bittersweet day when Jesus rode in that triumphal entry on Palm Sunday. Um, because in that day, they're worshipping Jesus, they're praising him. But by Friday, the cross is coming. So we know that many in this same crowd were within a fort, short few days, were no longer calling out Hosanna, Hosanna, and praises unto God. Now they're, they're shouting out words of crucify him, crucify him. That's a far cry from what they said just a few days earlier. So many people are like that. What they say is what they say and how they act is like, two different things. And so often, sometimes when the rubber meets the road, there is 
no personal relationship with the Lord. One day they're praising God, the next day they might be cursing God out. One day they may be feeling like, you know, God just doesn't seem to care, he's not concerned, and by the next day it's like, you know, how could God do this in my life? And so we have mixed emotions and feelings. And what happens is their words do not match where their heart really is. And they possess a casual kind of faith, not a committed faith. They have maybe sense of a religion, but they miss the person of Jesus Christ. So how can we have that committed faith today? How can we be real sincere in our heart and consistent at what we say and what we do? This morning, I want to offer you that truth. That is what really salvation is about and knowing why Jesus has really come. Let me make a, a few comments and explain to you just how we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So you may have been attending church, maybe, or maybe you've heard all about the story of Jesus all of your life, but you've never had a personal relationship with him. You may feel that serving Jesus is not important, and that, you know, God loves us all. God forgives us all. Everybody is God's children. And so it doesn't matter how I live or what I say. God is love. Maybe you just don't understand why uh, we have to acknowledge God as being our Savior. Why do we have to ask Jesus to be our personal Savior, live within our life? Um, we're all born with the Spirit. God has created us with as physical beings and spiritual beings. And we have to fill that spirit with something, whether that's a spirit with God in our life or other things in our life to, to bring us fulfillment and desire in our, in our life. All of us need to make this decision. So let me ask you two very important questions today. The first question I want to ask is, have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain that if you were to die today, would you go to heaven, or is that something that you're still working on? Uh, you can actually put your answer in the comment below if you like to do that. Um, maybe you're going to respond with something like saying, you know, I'm working on it. Uh, I'm trying to live that good life. I think God will let me into heaven as long as I'm a good person. But just stop and think about that question for a moment. You know, if you're not sure about where you are spiritually in regards to getting to heaven, let me ask you this second question to help you understand a little bit more. Suppose you were to die today and you were to stand before God and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? Why? Maybe you put that comment below. And just think about that for just a moment. The response from this question can be answered in so many ways. You know, I, I've been a good person. I've heard that so many times. Um, God's going to take me into heaven because I've been, been very good. I go to church every week. I've heard that numerous times. I try to obey the Ten Commandments. You know, I, I believe that there's a God. I believe that there's a Bible. Or God's love. How could a loving God send somebody to hell? Whatever your comment is today, we need to understand that heaven is not something we get to enjoy because we believe it may be true. We think God owes us that for being a good person. So how do we get to heaven? How do we have eternal life? Well, we get to heaven, first of all, by grace. Heaven is a free gift, the Bible says. In Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not earned. It's not something you deserve. None of us deserve it. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 clearly tell us, for it's by grace you've been saved. It's through faith. It is not of yourself. It is a gift from God, lest any of us would boast. It's his gift, absolutely free. Let's just say for a moment that I would come to your home and visit with you, 
and I would um, bring you a box of candy. And I would hand this candy to you and I would say, this is a special gift for me to you. Please enjoy it. I hope you really like chocolates. Well, before I actually give it over to you, then I say, well, I need to remind you, would you um, please give me $10 for that box of chocolate? Would you consider that being a gift for me? Or is that something you had to purchase? Yes, it's not certainly isn't a free gift, is it? It's something you had to do in order to really receive it. And what Jesus is talking about here is that it's absolutely free. It's not something you have to do to purchase here. He's already purchased it for us. So that can be seen, I think, a lot more clear when we understand what the Bible says about us. What is a man? Man is a sinner. The Bible says all of us have sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 3.23, falling short, meaning basically you're missing the mark. It's like an arrow that's shooting toward a, a target, but that arrow's falling short of its target. So we all sin every day. We sin in word, we sin in deed, and we sin in thoughts. But can't I can't save myself because I'm a sinner. Matthew 5, 48 tells us that we're to be perfect even as Christ is perfect. Wow, that's impossible. For me, it's absolutely impossible. For all of us, it's impossible. Let's, um, let's just assume that, again, I'm, I'm in your home. And, uh, well, no, you're at my home. Let's make it uh, where I'm making you a, an egg omelet. I love omelets, and I'm going to need a number of eggs to make you a nice big omelet. And let's say I crack these eggs, and I'm putting first egg, the second, the third. But I get to the fourth egg, and that fourth egg is rotten. But I decide, you know what? I think I'll just not worry about it. This is only one egg out of the other three that's rotten. They're never going to notice it. So I'll just crack the egg open and put it in. Now, you know, and I know that that one egg is going to make the rest of that omelet um, absolutely rotten, and you're not going to want to eat it. You see how impossible it is for us? We're just one person. We, we make the whole rotten. We're sinners. We need to be saved by, by God's grace. And that comes into a lot sharper focus when we look at what the Bible really says about God. You see, God is merciful. Therefore, he doesn't want to punish sin. God is love. First John chapter 4 makes it clear. And so many people realize that. God is love, absolutely. But the Bible also says God is just. And therefore, he has to punish sin. In Exodus chapter 34 and verse 70, God makes it clear. He does not leave the guilty unpunished. So God solved that problem. He had to solve the problem. If we're guilty, if we're in sin, if we're not perfect, how did he solve the problem? Through his son, Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the infinite God man. In John chapter one, we're told in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God and became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh. Jesus Christ came incarnate. Jesus Christ came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. He came as a babe to identify with us. What did he do? He died on the cross. He rose again on the third day to pay the penalty for our sins and to purchase a place in heaven for us. Let me just explain it this way. Let me just assume that in this book, and this is actually a Bible, in this book and all the pages of this book, are all my sins I've ever committed, whether they're in the past, the present, or in the future. You see, the Bible says we all were like sheep. We've all gone astray. But God has, has turned to his way, and He, the Lord has laid all these sins on him. The iniquity of us all was laid upon him for all of our sins to give us free access to God. To give us that access. Jesus Christ took those sins, transferred them to himself, that we might have access to our Heavenly Father. See, that's what Jesus has come to do for us. This gift is only received one way. You see, it's by faith. You see, there's only, in this group of keys here, there's only one key that will start my car. One key. 
This is it. This key will not open the door to my house, will not open the door to anything else, only the car. And that's the same way it is with faith. There's only one faith. Faith is not something that is just a mere intellectual thing. James tells us the devils believed and they even trembled. It's not just believing intellectually and I know that there's a Jesus and that I just trust him and believing that intellectually. And faith is not uh, just a temporal faith where I believe, well, you know, I need to fly from here to California and I need to pray that God will keep me safe and uh, make my, you know, my destination safe and secure. Well, no, that's not what faith is. It's just temporary. Faith is much more than that. Faith is trusting in Jesus Christ alone for eternal life. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone, and he or you will be saved. You, you see what I'm saying today? You don't trust in your ability to be a good person. You don't trust in just because you believe intellectually. You trust only in Jesus alone, not by your good works and not by being a great person. So you see, let me clarify this just briefly for you today. It's transferring your trust from yourself to Jesus Christ. It's to receive the resurrected Lord, the living Christ in your life. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Jesus wants to come in to the door of your heart and your life. You receive him as Lord and Savior. You repent. Repentance means that you turn away from, that you, you, work, you turn away from what you were doing 180 degrees and you walk in the new direction, in an opposite direction. If you really understand what I just shared with you, then I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you will understand and that you can repent and then believe that Jesus Christ can be the Lord and Savior of your life. You can pray this prayer, whether it's the first time, maybe you've never prayed this prayer before, or maybe you need to rededicate your life and you want to go from constantly saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, and not crucify, crucify, but keeping the Lord first and foremost in your life, letting him have praises by the life you live. Then you can repeat this prayer after me. Let's just bow our heads and let's let's pray and ask God to help us today. Dear, kind, loving Father, thank you for the privilege we have of knowing your word and the truth that you have brought to us today and understanding that why Jesus came, he came that we might have life and that Lord, he came that he might take away our sins to cleanse us from all those unrighteousness and to give us a new life in Jesus Christ. I pray that those people who are bowing their heads today, that you will give them clear understanding about what we need to pray for today, and that they in just a moment will repeat these words after me and will be able to say to you, Lord, that they are now trusting in you alone for their life. If you, have, if you really want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I'm going to ask you, please repeat these words after me. Dear, kind, loving Father, I thank you for your word, and thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for coming here today, every day, to touch us and to allow that word to live in my life. Lord, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I trust you alone. I don't trust in my works. I don't trust in, in what I can do. I don't trust in anyone else, but I trust in you alone, that you came to die on the cross and you rose again to save me from my sins. And I receive that today. I declare you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I repent of my sins, and I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart that I might live a life for you and that you might be glorified in and through me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me 
And I thank you, Lord, for saving me and giving me eternal life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying that. I pray that a number of you have prayed that today. I'd like to remember you or remind you actually today of a verse that Jesus says to us in 1 John, in John chapter 6, actually. He says, he who believes has everlasting life. You now have everlasting life. If you prayed that prayer, if you committed your life to Jesus Christ, um, welcome to the family of God. Praise the Lord. Do you remember the second question I asked you earlier? If you were to die today and stand before God and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? You have an answer for that, a clear answer. Not because you've been a good person, not because you've been you're worthy of it, but because Jesus Christ came into your life and you accepted that message that he's died for you and he rose again on the third day. So you have eternal life. Praise God. Let me just give you four really quick things very quickly of what you need to do after you've made this commitment to the Lord today. And read and study the Bible. Let the word of God be your source of communication to Jesus. This is his voice speaking to you. And you need to read that. And read the, begin with the New Testament. Begin with John's gospel, the life of Jesus. That would be very helpful to you in learning and growing and understanding about who Jesus is. And regularly attend a gospel church, a church that believes that this kind of message that I'm speaking to you about today, it can be Everett Assembly of God, any other church that preaches the gospel that where you feel comfortable to be around God's people that can encourage you and strengthen you and sustain you. And then communicate to God in prayer every day. Just, just talking to God, sharing your hurts, sharing your pains, your needs, your burdens. God wants to hear you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to answer those questions that you have. And then finally, tell somebody else about what you did today. That's a testimony, letting people realize that you now have a Savior living in you and that that Savior is leading your life, giving you hope, giving you joy, giving you peace. That's what being a Christian is all about, is sharing that with other people. And I just am richly blessed today that you have made that commitment to the Lord. Thank you so much. We're going to take a few moments before I leave today to just share communion. Um, if you, as a Christian, you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, let's start this week off right, on the right foot, to let the Lord know that we choose to give him our very best. And that it's not going to just be Hosanna one day and crucify him the next. So Christians, will you join with me today in taking communion to signify that the Lord as our Savior, and he lives in us, and we are his true disciple. And when we take the bread and the cup in remembrance of our Heavenly Father today, let's remember God proclaims his perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ himself, who died on the cross, ascended to heaven, and to prepare a place of eternal life for us. And finally, let's remember the provisions he's made today to be our healer. He wants to heal us as well. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, those of you that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and know this clearly, the Bible says, but he was bruised, or he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. But by his wounds, we are healed. We receive healing for all of our diseases physically and spiritually today. Oh, let me remind you, we're going to pray today as well for the healing of those who are suffering from this coronavirus. We're believing God that with this coronavirus can be healed. We can see the power of God healing people's lives. But let me read to you two verses of scripture before we take the emblems. Would you please get prepared and put those emblems in your hand? They're the juice, uh, the grape juice that signifies Jesus' blood for us, washing away our sins, and the, the bread that signifies his brokenness for us. We're going to take them together today in just a moment. But let me read this verse of scripture to you. And he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to them. 
saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let's partake together and let's believe God and trust him. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant. And in obedience, you died on the cross for our salvation and for our healing, both spiritually and physically. And we receive the healing of those who are even suffering right now from this, this virus, virus that's killing many people. But Lord, we're believing that there's those who are ill today as we pray that we would trust your word that by your stripes we are healed. We pray healing for everyone that's sick today with this virus. We pray healing for anyone who's sick from any disease. Lord, we pray that the power of your Holy Spirit would visit with each one and visit with us today and remind us, Lord, to be grateful for why you came to save us spiritually and Lord to minister to us physically and emotionally in every way. And Lord, we took communion today believing that you're our great physician and we're trusting and believing, Lord, that you're going to minister to the entire world as we're trusting and putting every life into your hands. We give you the praise and we give you the thanks for being a faithful, loving God. And we'll give you all the glory for what you're going to accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Well, it is great being able to share with you. And I hope and trust that you are trusting the Lord Jesus Christ in the days ahead. Have faith. Have confidence in the Lord. He loves you. And uh, I wanted you to know that I love you as well. God bless you. And Bonnie's going to come and just share a couple of comments with you. Sorry, I forgot I was supposed to do that. Just, uh, again, remember to check out our Facebook page, our Facebook group, our website. And uh, we just love you. And I'm not even sure with this new system how to turn it off. So I'm saying bye. God bless you. We love you. And I'm going to try to figure out how to turn it off. Love you. How long was it?